Hello my amazing book lovers, my name is Ash and today we are doing the next episode of Library Lotto. Also, everyone decided to mow the lawn right now, like right now. So if you hear that, I apologize. I literally only have half an hour to film, so I have really no choice and it pains me, it pains me. But we're gonna go anyway, we're gonna do this. Library Lotto is a game that I created where I go to my library and with the help of you all, uh, I choose a book depending on the row, the bookshelf and the shelf. And I choose random books I know nothing about and then I read them and make it into a vlog, which is what I'm gonna be doing now. Um, to choose a number, it'll be at the end of this video or I'll just put it up here right now. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. And I think this is episode three. This is officially the third episode. So I have been doing this for like the three months and this month has been the hardest so far as in like, I cannot choose. I don't know, I don't know what to choose. Okay, let me just start from the beginning. So first I'm going to be putting up the comment that was chosen. Uh, I did it earlier yesterday before I went to the library and Graveyard Queer was the one that was chosen. So I do also have footage of me going to my library. I might just have me talking over it because I did not really film much. Um, when I went in, there was a librarian that was literally in the adjacent row that I was in. So like they were like a little bit uh, in front of me and I was trying, I was trying so hard to just film as inconspicuously as possible. I was just like trying for them not to see me film. So I was just like filming the one row that I was supposed to be filming and it was a mess, but I tried my best and there was a lot of good books on the shelf. This is the first time in Library Lotto where I do not know what book I'm gonna choose. And this is a huge struggle and I still don't know. I've been sitting on it for like a day and I still don't know for sure. So I have these two books right next to me. I don't know what I'm gonna choose. I'm gonna read a page and then come back to you. So yeah, I think I'm going to do that right now and show you first, tell you what they're about, and then I will read a page and then decide. Maybe I'll decide. I don't know if I can decide. I'm so ambivalent. The first book I chose, I could not help myself. I chose this one. I did pull it out of the shelf and show you and I looked at it and I was like, this looks adorable. So I'm taking it out. This is Murder Always Barks Twice by Jennifer Hawkins. And this is a murder mystery following a corgi named Oliver and his owner, Emma. Someone is killed and they are trying to discover who the killer is together. Uh, Oliver can speak only to his owner, Emma. No one else can understand Oliver. So it is just a little cute, simple read. I'm not sure if this is a series or not. I don't go into this knowing what book number this is or anything. Although I do assume this is probably fine by itself even if it is a series. So yeah, this is just a really cute murder mystery book. It's like 350 pages and I think this is something I can get through pretty quickly. So this is one I've been considering because of the length. Um, my boyfriend also thinks that I should read it because he says it's adorable and he loves corgis. And it's also a chatty corgi mystery. I mean, come on, it sounds adorable. Like just look at this, look at this little boy. He's so cute. This is my first choice that I could potentially choose. And next is this chunky book. This is The City of Lies by Sam Hawk. This is a first book and I'm not sure if there's a duology or trilogy. There was two books on the shelf. I checked publication date and everything and I'm pretty sure this is the first book. So yeah, I pretty sure. Um, this is obviously an adult fantasy book. It is so chunky though. Oh my God, the font is so tiny. Like, can you see the font? Oh my god. I get to this book though, I will not be able to get to all of my fantasy books. I have Assassin's Apprentice, I have Eldest, and then I have this. It's not possible for me to finish all of those books alongside my other like seven books. So if I do read this, I don't know if I'll be able to finish all of my other books on my TBR, but it's a oh, maybe, maybe we'll see. Also blurred by Robin Hobb and John Gwynn. I didn't notice that until I already got it. So my intrigue peaked a bit when I saw that. I wanna read the back of it, but I'm so bad at reading out loud. I'm gonna try to read it out loud, and if I don't do a good job, I'm just gonna try to tell what it's about. Poison, treachery, ancient spirits, sieges. The poison wars begins now. Outwardly, Joven is the quiet, forgettable friend of the Chancellor's charming, irresistible heir. In secret, he's a master of poisons and chemicals, sworn to protect the Chancellor's family from treachery. When the Chancellor succumbs to the unknown poison and an army besieges the city, Joven and his sisters, Kalina, must protect the heir and save their city-state. But treachery lurks in every corner and the ancient spirits of the land are rising and angry. So this is a story about a character who studies poisons and is very well knowledge in poisons and then someone gets poisoned with something that isn't known. Wars, sieges, all that kind of stuff happens. It does sound like something up my alley. It's a book I've never ever ever heard of. I've never seen it before, not even the cover of it. So this is something I am very interested in reading as well. But the problem is like, 
it's big. It has 552 pages with a really, really small font. And if I did a reading vlog on this, it would be so long because it's just a longer book and I would like to talk about it as I read it. So, I don't know, I don't know. Um, so incredibly polar opposite books, <laughs> like, there's no real relation to the two of them. A cute corgi mystery and like a poison fantasy, adult fantasy. I don't know. I'm gonna read a page and I will come back to you, turn my fan on, my AC on, cool off for a second, and then I'll come back and let you know how I feel. I still don't know what I'm gonna choose. Maybe if I read a page, it'll help me. So yeah, uh, we will be doing that and I will update you when I finish reading. So I have read a page of both of these and, okay, thoughts, I guess. Um, this one was starting off with the main character, Emma, and she's in her bakery. She opens up a store which is Reed's Tea and Cake, so it's like a tea and cake store, and she opens that up and it starts there. So that's all that really happened. It's her talking to someone else, like a friend or a customer, and that's pretty much how that starts off with. It didn't like grip me, but I think this is just like a simple, fast, quick, easy, fun read, I would assume. Um, maybe a bit, a bit darker, there is murder in it, but I mean, I doubt it's that dark. My interest in this, I want to try it. I honestly do. Like maybe I could still pick this up if I have time this month, which I doubt I do, but I kind of want to maybe pick this up when I have time or at least read a bit of it and see if I'm interested in it. But yeah, um, it seems cute. That is what I feel about this book. Next, I'm going to be talking about City of Lies. And City of Lies uh, has a really good first sentence. Robin Hobb literally says that if the first line doesn't make you buy this book, you should turn to your fantasy lover's badge. Like, she even says that uh, the first line is really good, which is pretty good. I'll read it to you. Every chapter has a poison that is described and the symptoms and all that stuff. But yeah, the first chapter is Joven, who is the main character. And the first line is, I was seven years old the first time my uncle poisoned me, which was pretty interesting. So we start with that. And then we see Joven growing up a little bit alongside his uncle that teaches him about poisons and kind of distinguishing them through food. And that his, fa his uncle eventually is on his deathbed at the very end of that like page. So his uncle Ethan is dying now, the one that taught him about um, poisons and all that stuff. So I find myself more interested in this one. I think I might choose this one for the month, but I'm considering even reading this one still. Like, maybe as like a side thing, I won't have it in this video, because I don't think I can have both of these in one video. It would be like over an hour long vlog, and I don't think most people would want to watch that. So we're not going to do that. I think I'm going to choose City of Lies, but I don't have time for it. So this is going to be interesting, and this vlog is going to be insanely long if I choose this one. So if you are along the journey, thank you. And if you don't watch this video, I don't really blame you in a way. Um, but yeah, if you want to choose numbers for next month, I will, it'll be at the end of the video, timestamped to know how to do that. So yeah, uh, thank you, Graveyard Queer, for doing this because you helped me get some good books this month, so thank you. All right, I'm going to be trying this out and updating you a little bit as I continue it, I guess. Uh, hopefully I enjoy it. I mean, it sounds kind of cool. So, so we'll see and we will try this and read a little bit. Probably I'll be wearing different clothes because I'm not going to be reading right now, but I will be reading this within a few days. So yeah, I'll update you when I get to that point and just a little bit of b-roll, show that time passing by, and then we will get to this when I can. So let's see how this works. Let's go. Sorry to the Cory.
So it's been a few days since I updated last, and I only just started reading my books from Library Lotto. There's a few issues though that I need to address before we start. Number one, I'm still incredibly ambivalent what book I want to start because this book is so much shorter and I kind of rather have a short book because I still have and today is like the 12th, no it's the 13th, it's like 1am. We're not going to talk about how bad my sleep schedule is because it's bad. It's the 13th of August so it's almost halfway through the month and I just finished Assassin's Apprentice so I finally finished my large chunky adult fantasy book so that means if I wanted to start City of Lies which I have by the way um, I have started this I am 41 pages in and I am still debating if I should continue it because other than this library lotto book I have two books still that I need to read uh, Eldest and It Ends With Us now It Ends With Us will definitely be easy I can probably finish that within a few days maybe like five six days but Eldest, I, do, I don't think I can read Eldest and this book. Um, this is like 550 pages and it's taking me a long time to read it. I think I read like 35 pages of this today and it took me about an hour and a half because the font is tiny tiny and I read fantasy very slowly, like high fantasy, epic adult fantasies. I read adult fantasies incredibly slowly so it's going to take me so long to get through this book. So. Either I put Eldest on hold and I continue reading City of Lies or I say let's not push it and just read Murder Always Barks Twice. Um, which This is so tempting because it's shorter but like I just did that whole clip where I'm like I'm choosing City of Lies and now I'm like am I? <laughs> I kind of really like this shelf like I love this shelf honestly I kind of want to read both books and I don't have time to read both of them and eldest. So since I'm still not sure what I'm doing, I'm just going to talk about what I've already kind of experienced. I've read around 30 or so pages of City of Lies and so far from what I can tell you, I'm liking it. I think this is okay so first of all, first of all let's go back a bit. Um, this author, so Sam Hawk. Sam Hawk is an Australian author. This is her debut novel and she's a female fantasy author. So Jovan is the main character. He is a friend and I mean not guard. I feel like I would say loosely guard because I don't really I don't think he's a guard at all. Tane is the character he's following alongside and this is the Chancellor's heir, so his uncle. So like the Chancellor is Tane's uncle. Tane is the friend of the main protagonist, Joven. I'm pretty sure I'm getting it right, I think. So we follow them, there's like a tussle outside in the street, and Tane is just a very... Tane just seems to be one of those characters that is not very aware of their own safety, like <laughs> he just jumps into things. Um, I think that might be an issue later on. They're having a dinner, and of course, uh, Joven's uncle, he pretty much tastes the food before the Chancellor and Tane and people, the important people eat it. So they're at dinner and, wait, this is spoilers by the way, I'm pretty much going to be having a spoiler vlog the entire time. So if you want to read this book, probably don't watch this part. I'm going to put a spoiler free at the end of the video. So they're at the table and they're eating and then a few hours later, Peter Joven's uncle, the poisoned, the poison master or the taste tester, he gets sick and then Eventually, a few hours later, the Chancellor gets sick, which is a pretty big deal, and they don't know what the poison is, which is pretty impressive considering we are dealing with um, the uncle, who specializes in poisons, and then Joven, who was taught by his uncle, and everything he gives him so far hasn't been working. So they don't have the antidote, they cannot rid this toxin or poison, and they are trying to figure it out. So I left off just around that time. Uh, I am curious what's going to happen. It's like not... The best thing i have a few things i want to talk about i'm gonna put this down because it's heavy and my back's really hurting and i have cramps and i'm just not i'm not just not my day today so the first thing is there's a lot of words thrown at you that you have no idea what they mean i mean there's like random people places there's no map which is which is so unfortunate for a fantasy book there's a few like locations that have been mentioned without a map and that is really unfortunate because i don't always use maps but when places are mentioned constantly and I can't visually see it it makes it a little difficult to visualize um so there's not, not there's no map uh, a lot of a lot of things are thrown at you without knowing what they are it not everything is explained like they're wearing a garment and I tried googling it and it doesn't exist in the real world so I'm assuming it is something that the author created but she doesn't describe 
what it looks like and maybe she did at one point but only like i don't remember it i don't remember i will be honest with you guys i don't remember it at all i think there's the only things i wrote down i only wrote down that there's no map and there's a lot of locations mentioned there's a lot of names mentioned that are not described so far that is all i really got to like i only read like 30 something pages and the fact that i just finished assassin's apprentice makes this confusing because they both had like poison things happening and like fits is trying to learn it's like it's so similar the ending and just assassin's apprentice in general and then going to this like my brain's a little bit confused because we're talking about like poisons and stuff and i'm just like okay maybe this wasn't the best choice but i didn't it was technically an accident i don't know what i'm doing but yeah uh that's all i'm gonna say right now I, it's only 30 pages in and if i keep doing updates like this often it's gonna take me like a five hour vlog and that's just too much for me and no one's gonna watch that I, we'll keep seeing what happens if i end up switching books don't be surprised i don't know yet i don't know what's happening but i'm gonna see what i do and i might just have to not read eldest this month and i might either bring it to next month or the next month after that which would suck but we'll see uh we'll see how it goes and i should go to bed now so uh good night everyone see you soon update so the last clip i just showed you was from august 12th it is now august 16th so it's been four days since i've done you last actually i'm doing really well with my reading considering i'm almost halfway now so as of pretty much a few seconds ago i got to page 203 so i am this far of the way through now so in like two more days i'll be halfway well last time i talked about this itan who is Joven's uncle, the poison taste tester, he was sick alongside the chancellor. And since then, both of them died, unfortunately. Uh, so both of them died, which meant that Tane, who was the heir of the chancellor, is now the new chancellor. Uh, he's pretty young. He didn't, really ex he didn't really expect to become the chancellor so soon. So soon after that, the I don't know what they're called, but they're kind of like birds. So it's kind of like carrier pigeons where they take notes or scrolls and then they bring them to another location and inform other places of news that's happening nearby. The area where the birds were kept in was destroyed. They don't know who did it, but something happened where a lot of the birds either died or it was destroyed so the birds couldn't come back. So someone pretty much messed up with their only means of communication from one area to another. So they had really nothing to really do when it came to sending messages out. Early on in the book, it wasn't really technically an issue up until more recently, but soldiers that are in this kingdom, oh, the soldier, okay, what is this? I don't know the name of this place. I think it's, it starts with an S. It starts with an S. Don't remember what it's called, but the place that we're following currently, their soldiers are currently in another location and they are dealing with another problem, which I find kind of ironic, and if it, you'll see why in a minute, but let me just put this down. I don't need to hold it the whole time. All the soldiers from this one place are in another area entirely, um, which poses a problem because something eventually happens, and it's not. It's not. They shouldn't have put all the soldiers in one space. It's a bad idea. All these things at the same time kind of just created a really bad concoction, and at this point, I think we're following currently, like, not the rich people, but the kind of more noble or the nobility. So we're seeing them and the people outside of the wall or the castle walls, the people that are not as rich, the poorer people, people are approaching the castle walls and they don't really notice at first what they want. So the nobility and Joven think that they're there for maybe just to negotiate or talk, but they start to attack. So these people are called the Darfri and they are kind of forgotten about their people i feel like people don't really care about what's happening with them they even say like why are they attacking us we don't know why they're attacking us it's not like we've really done anything to harm them but they've also kind of neglected them because they haven't really been helping them either we don't know why they're attacking but currently the darfri are laying siege to the castle walls and they're trying to get inside and we don't know why still um like i'm on page 203 and i'm trying to figure out why they're attacking they're doing it violently it's not like they're doing it to like you know send a message they are people are dying um they're sending up ladders trying to get over the wall and there is someone on the nobility side inside the castle that is first of all um helping poison the chancellor and Etan. the person that 
poisoned Etan and the Chancellor is still in the castle. Most likely it's someone that they see as like an ally. Um, it's probably one of the guilders because there's like a ton of people like the stone gilder, uh, there's a theater gilder, stone gilder, scribe gilder, there's like a bunch of gilders and a lot of them are kind of being suspicious. So we don't know if one of them is the one that's helping the people outside of the walls. There is treachery involved, I think. We're trying to figure out who it is, who's poisoning people. Uh, recently, Tain was actually almost poisoned. Uh, he was given food and he was about to eat it, but then Joven, who is his taster now, he told him not to eat it and he wanted to taste test it. And he did and he found out that there was indeed poison in his food. And this is the first time someone ever actually attempted to poison Tain. So it was a kind of a big shock to everyone involved, especially Tain, obviously, because he was almost poisoned and killed. I just finished the chapter where Joven actually notices like a slight ripple in a puddle on the street and he doesn't really know why because there's not any real movement nearby and he realizes there's a very very subtle vibration beneath him. He eventually ends up going underground and then he notices there's tunnel systems below so the Darfri are now beginning to tunnel underneath the castle walls which is slightly terrifying. So he went through the tunnel system, I don't know why he thought it'd be a good idea but for some reason Joven went through the tunnel system and then uh, someone was following him and he almost got he was starting to get lost and I was getting a little anxious but it was really well done I actually really liked the way that their tension built up really liked it um, but yeah he was not thankfully found but he's very close to being found and he just got out of the tunnel system and went right to Tane to talk about what he found also a character named Kalina this is Joven's sister she was supposed to be the poison master um, after her uncle but she was tested. Before you can become like the poison tester, whatever the rank is called, um, you have to go through like a little trial period and she failed hers. So she was poisoned and she nearly died. So she has permanent repercussions from the poisoning that her uncle gave her. And because she wasn't able to handle that, or get used to the poisons given to her, um, now she won't be able to be a poison tester or poison master. And now Joven, her younger brother, is the one that is now the poison tester. And she's very resentful of it and jealous of it. She also deals with physical, permanent physical uh, problems that she constantly mentions, like she's out of breath constantly. I think she might have fertility issues now because of the poison. I think she only mentioned it once. So we are changing POVs between Kalina and Joven, it's first person. I will be honest, I like Joven's a little bit more, but still, like, it's still enjoyable. So that's what happened last. I just got to that point. But yeah, I'm not going to talk more about it because I've been talking for 10 minutes and I don't want this video to get long again. So it is 1.30 in the morning. Yep, it is. It is 1.30 in the morning. So yeah, we are going to see who the person that is poisoning them is. Uh, if I had to guess, I mean, it has to be a gilder. I mean, it, I'm, maybe it doesn't have to be. It could be a gilder. It's probably gonna be the person we don't expect, right? It's gonna be someone like... <gasps> Imagine it was Marco, and he's actually a really nice guy. He's really helping a lot. But like, if you're a nice guy in fantasy, and you're not a protagonist, there's a decent chance that you're not a great person. Like, you're probably gonna betray someone. Like, I don't know. I'm always suspicious of the nice people in the books, even though I like Marco a lot. But you never know. Like, you never know with these people. If you're nice in a book, especially a fantasy book, watch your back because you probably won't be a good person. I'll update you again when I get a little bit further. I'm almost halfway, so I'll probably wait until I'm a little over halfway because I don't want to keep updating because, like, it's gonna be too long, so let's just not update and let me go to bed, um, or read. Probably should be going to bed, but you know, who needs sleep? <laughs> I'll see you in a minute and I'll let you know if I get any answers and figure out what the heck is happening because I actually am really curious, I want to know. Alright, another update. I am on a little bit halfway through now. I'm on page 300. Can you see that? <laughs> um, 300 out of 528. Not a lot has happened, so I'm not gonna update too much. I kind of know why the, I'm just gonna call them rebels, um, because as the people that are attacking aren't exclusively bad people, and there are some of them that are innocent that are still living within the walls of the castle that are now being attacked and I feel really bad for them. So I'm not gonna call them by their race, I guess, or their culture or anything. I'm just gonna say 
rebels as in the people that are sieging. So currently they are laying siege because a lot of the wrongdoings that have been done to them in the past, they also did try and kind of do something peacefully, but the council, I think, never showed up. And pretty much they just said, you know what, screw it, we're going to take matters into our own hands and we're going to deal with this because they've been treated so badly for so long that they just got tired of it and now they are attacking. And regardless of what the like a rich the castle side does, they're not going to listen because they're just fed up and they don't trust them anymore. So it's kind of just being like a big issue right now. The tunnels also, the rebels found out that the, I'm not sure what they're called, I'm just going to call them the rich people. Um, The rebels found out that the rich, the ones that they're attacking, they found out that they knew about the tunnels. So while they were in the tunnels, uh, they started to collapse them. So they collapsed the tunnels, which inevitably made the structure of the walls weaken because obviously beneath the walls collapsed. Right now where I'm reading they are currently using acid to diminish <laughs> the bridge structure uh, so that they can collapse the bridge which is a huge issue because that bridge is very important to the castle rich side or the city side but they know that if they can get a past the walls they can use that bridge to get to them so they destroy the bridge. My reaction earlier was because someone was almost assassinated not quite. I was actually really hoping, <laughs> is that mean? But I kind of hoped they'd be assassinated. Because, not because I don't like them, but because I was just like, like something has to happen. Like this book is just, th things need to happen. This book is very, very slow. Um, a lot of it is just, what are we gonna do? Why is this stuff happening? Who is doing all this? Who's poisoning people? Who's the person that's betraying us or who's the person within treason that's all this is right now and it's not a bad book by any means but it's just like let's just get with the program let's do something when the character was supposed to be assassinated i was like oh something's about to happen but no no he was saved someone yelled out and he was fine um the person that was assassinated almost is someone that was suspected to have been the poisoner in the beginning, but it's too obvious, so everyone's like, it can't be him, right? Like, he's been framed. So, most likely he was framed, um, and now he's almost killed. So, I don't know why people are trying to kill him so badly, but poor guy, uh, he can't catch a break. So yeah, that's kind of just where I left off. Not really much to say other than that, but um, I also wanted to mention one more thing. So I, obviously I'm reading this, I'm halfway through it, and I'm not gonna stop reading it. The month is almost over. I really need to try, hurry up, and read more. But that sadly means that Murder Always Barks Twice is not gonna be read. It's not, I can't, I'm not gonna read it. Very sad, I know. Um, I can't read it. It's just like, I tried, but it's just like, it's just a fluffy little murder mystery that I'm like, it's not really my thing. Um, I think I would maybe enjoy it if I was in the right mindset, but like, I tried reading a little bit and I was just like, mmm, meh. <laughs> it was like I wasn't really that interested in it. Um, if it was more focused on the corgi, Oliver, I would have read this in a heartbeat. But it just mostly focuses on Emma, his owner, and like that. And I'm like, eh, I'm not really. I don't really care about the owner. I care more about Oliver. So I maybe I'll maybe I'll come back to it. It's possible. You never know. Right now, I'm just gonna not read that book, and I'm just gonna be focusing. I'm gonna be focusing on this uh, City of Lies because, like I said. It's chunky and it's gotta get through it. I also think that the romance interest was just introduced, I think. Zorvin was being followed by someone and finally he discovers who it is and it's a female. And of course he had to mention that her eyes are green in the moonlight and I'm like, okay, something's about to happen. You don't mention the female character's eye color like that without being interested in them. And then of course she is Darfri, which is most of the people that are doing the siege right now are Darfri and she is also herself, but a lot of people within the walls are actually innocent. They are just bystanders of this, and unfortunately they are being victimized because people outside the walls are seen as bad, and because they're in the walls and they're the same race and the same type of people, now they are being victimized and beaten up and stuff. So she's kind of against the rich people, the castle people, because they are always been above and privileged and her and her people have always been kind of pushed down and forgotten about. So it just feels like a potential romance there. Well, who knows? So yeah, that's all I really have to say. Uh, I should read a bit more before I go to bed. And yeah, so far it's good. <laughs>
uh, I'll see how it goes. Um, since I am over halfway, I'm probably only gonna update with big updates, things that, like, big things that happen. Hopefully I'll only have smaller updates from now on and just finish the book and let you know how I feel about it because I don't want this, this is just, this is getting long, this is getting a long video and I don't think anyone's gonna be watching it. If you're watching it right now and somehow you're, someone's actually watching this video, put, like, a sword or, like, any type of fantasy, like, dragon, swords, that kind of emoji down below. I'll actually know if someone's actually watching this if they put that emoji because I would be amazed if anyone is watching this. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm gonna go read. So um, see what happens and I'll update you again when I get a little bit further and when we find out more information. All right, sorry if you can hear my AC, but I just have a quick, quick update right now. I'm on page 384 and two things have happened so far. First of all, Tane, the new chancellor, the young chancellor, uh, he is an idiot because he's stubborn and he doesn't want his friend Joven Joven is the proofer, the main character. He doesn't want his friend to take all these poisons and he's getting tired of it. He's getting just tired of the whole thing. He's getting tired of the whole situation that the siege is happening, blah, blah, blah. So there's a part where food is given to him and everyone in the room is getting the same food, but he is very resistant to letting Joven try it. Cause he's like, I'm just tired of this. Like, I'm just tired of it. So he just takes a bite of the food, puts it down and leaves. Um, kind of like he's being rebellious and annoying. So of course, wh what do you know? He gets sick with the exact same poison that his uncle died from, the prior chancellor. So that's lovely, isn't it? Um, thankfully, I just got to the part where Joven figures out an antidote. He finds like this leaf that he can chew and yeah, so he's fine. Tane is alive. I'm not surprised about that. Also, another thing I'm not surprised about is the female uh, person that was following Joven the one that he described his eyes over. There is a romance between them. It's like so obvious. I knew it was gonna happen, but yeah, they kissed. They already slept together. And it, oh, it's been less than 100 pages, by the way. So it's moving fast, which means a few things. First of all, someone in that room with Joven and Tane, where Tane got sick, he got poisoned. Someone in that room poisoned Tane. And it's between, obviously, like, the main characters. Obviously, they're probably not the ones that did it. But also the assassin female. I think her name is Handria. Uh, her, Marco, or another character that I don't even care about. Um, and everyone's blaming it on the other two characters. But I have an assumption that maybe Handria is the one that poisoned Tane. Because there's a few reasons why. One, the romance went too quick. It's a little suspicious to me. Either really bad pacing for romance, or she is manipulating Joven, which I think might be that one. Maybe. Although she is pretty nice to him, and I don't want to make her seem like a villain just because she is Darfri, like the rebels, but it's just like something weird about it. Maybe it's, maybe I'm just being suspicious. That's probably the honest truth. Um, Kalina, Joven's sister, has left the walls and actually went underneath the bridge up into the other side so now she is trying to i think she's going to like see if she can communicate with the darfri which is a choice um don't know what she is expecting with that but i'm sure it's all gonna go great i'm getting closer to the end so a little bit left i guess 200 pages left i mean it's better than it used to be this book is taking me the entire month to read almost i started it like in the first third of the month and it's already the 21st so that's great. I'm not reading many books this month because of this book. It's just chunky. So we're gonna get through it. I'm here for another update. I am at the end of this book. I am on the last 100 pages of this book and it is picking up. It is getting really good. So originally I was thinking this might be like a three stars, 3.5 rounded down to a three. But now I'm considering a four at least. Probably a four. I don't think anything more than that. Um, 3.5 maybe rounded to a four, but I'll have to tell you why. So, Kalina did not go on to the opposing side. side. I thought she was going to the rebel side, which would have been really dumb, but thankfully she didn't. What she was doing was traveling to get to the army. The army are the soldiers who left to do something else, and then the rebels decided to attack around the same time that they left. So the soldiers of this entire city went somewhere else and that's why they're being attacked and it's very difficult for this city to kind of prevail because they don't have a lot of soldiers right now. So Kalina took a trip to where the soldiers were 
and she found the leader, I think her name is Avin? So the leader of the army, um, she went to tell her that the city is being attacked, come quick, it's dangerous, whatever. So they're now traveling back to the city to help with um, the rebel attack. And that's great, right? We're all happy about that. The issue is, while Kalina, uh, Jobin's sister, while Kalina is on the voyage with the soldiers, um, she hears one of the guards, or her guard, the one that's kind of watching over her, she hears the guard singing singing a tune, and she thinks that's familiar. What's happening is, um, she ends up saying like, that song, that song's really familiar, where you hear it from? And he's like, I'm not really sure. Um, and then eventually he says, oh, it was from a tra traitor that found them and was supposedly, he was like a bad guy that they thought, and they eventually killed him. And then Kalina realizes that it wasn't a traitor after all. The person that the song came from was one of the runners that were trying to alert the army like weeks prior. So there was like five or six people that went to alert um, the soldiers that the city was being attacked. And so Eldrick, the man that the song was from, that the guard was singing, was said to be a traitor from the soldiers. But in fact, he was a runner to tell the soldiers that the capital is being attacked. So that means that the leader of the group, she must have been told by the runner what was happening and he was killed and said to have been a traitor. So that means that something's happening with her. She's in on it. Something's wrong, clearly. And I'm terrified because they're going to the city right now and I don't know if they're going to betray them. I don't know what's happening. I don't know if they're going to side with the rebels. I don't know if they're going to attack their own people. I'm just so confused. Alongside that, we do find out who the poisoner is, um, and it's Marco. You know, remember in the beginning when I said, imagine it was Marco? <gasps> imagine it was Marco? I should have known, I should have known. <laughs> I'm not sure if there's a link between him and the female soldier, uh, female leader. I'm not sure if they're in cahoots, but yeah, Marco was the one that tried killing Tane and then also killed the prior chancellor and Jovan's uncle. He failed at killing Tane, but Marco walks into the room that Tane is in with Jovan and sees that he's alive and had speculated that he was alive, so he goes to attack him. And eventually Marco is killed by Jovan, and that scene was so well done. This book is getting really good. The sieges and the treachery and the mystery is actually really well done. I mean, it's kind of a slog throughout the book, but God, it was so good. Like, the way it was written, right? I was very impressed by it, very impressed. The fighting is really good too. A lot is going on, um, I'm really enjoying it. The Darfri have like a magic system. They kind of like pray, not pray, but they have like, they honor the spirits of like the water and the grounds. So they can have magic from it. It's not really touched upon a lot. So there's a little bit of a magic system, but it's not very touched upon. So currently we are seeing what the soldiers are going to do when they get to the city. They just arrived and I am so afraid. Like technically the soldiers themselves aren't in on it, but the leader is, and I'm not sure if she is going to betray someone. Like, I don't know. And like Kalina is at risk because if Kalina, like she could be killed now because Eldrick was killed. And I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, I'll have to update you. I only have 100 pages left, so I think I'm gonna wait until I finish the book, quickly update, then I'm gonna recap, and then we're going to finish the video because yeah, long video. Uh, I'm trying not to make it longer, but it's so hard. This book is huge and it's just hard not to talk about it constantly. But yeah, I'm almost done it and it's getting good. Um, really liking in the end, really liking in the end. I think it's a bit too long this book, but I still think it's enjoyable and I'm looking forward to finishing it and letting you know how I feel about it. So yeah, a lot happening and I'm gonna finish this book probably, if not tonight, then tomorrow. 100%, 100%, so yeah. Uh, We'll see you then. So Kalina was just stabbed by Avon, the uh, the like female soldier captain. She was stabbed and put in the river. I don't know if she's alive. I have a feeling she will be alive. This book feels like it would do that, but it's a fantasy book, so we'll see. All right, I finally finished City of Lies. This is the final update, thankfully, uh, before we 
just have a basic review and end this vlog, finally. So, not a lot to really say. The ending was really good. Um, Kalina did end up being alive. Of course she was alive. She ended up being alive in the last, like, page we found out. So, the next book is supposed to be like, talk about the mystery and why they did this and how Kalina, if she's gonna wake up or not. Um, so that's, I guess, good <laughs> for her. She was in cahoots with Marco. Her and Marco were trying to kill Tane and everyone so that they can rule, supposedly. So that T Avon can rule. Okay. She gets- she goes back to the the city. She goes back to the city. See that Tane's, Tane is alive, which she didn't want. And then she knows that Tane likes her, so they sleep together. And she's like 20 years older than him, which is its own thing. But like, why would you do that with him if- you tried killing him? I was actually shocked she didn't kill him in that moment. I don't know why she didn't. That's actually a pretty good question. Why didn't she try killing him then? Oh, she's in jail now. They tried killing them one more time. It didn't work out, of course. And yeah, so the next book is supposed to like show the mystery of if Kalina's gonna wake up from her injuries and all that. So yeah, um, I'm gonna just round up my thoughts in the next clip, uh, what I felt about the book. and like finish up this vlog. It's been way too long and I'm just happy that I finished this book. It took me half a, over half a month. So yeah, I'm finally done with it. Um, enjoyed it. I think I really liked the ending. Um, but yeah, I'll talk about that soon. Let's go and talk about what I felt about this book overall and talk about what the Goodreads rating is. So we're gonna go do that right now. All right, I am done. I'm finally done this book. It took me a long time to get here, but I'm finished. I'm gonna give an overall review of how I felt about this book. I finished this book a few days ago. Actually, it's been over a week since I finished this book, and I'm gonna be finally talking about how I felt about it overall. I've checked on Goodreads, and it, this book has a, I think, 3.81 average rating on Goodreads. It has a decent amount of ratings um, and reviews. Obviously not a whole lot, but I'm actually kind of um, surprised, I guess, because I've never heard of this book before, but a decent amount of people have read it. Two people on my friends list have read it, so I was surprised to see that. I think one of them gave it a 2.5 and one gave it a 5. I went into this book and I didn't really know much about it. I started it off and it was fine. The beginning I wasn't a huge, like, I wasn't really enamored by it, I didn't love it, and it kind of took a while to kind of get into the characters and the world. Um, I did like it. There were terms that were used, I didn't really know what they meant, and I don't know if they actually described it very well. There's no map, and I think this would have definitely been beneficial with a map, because a lot of places were mentioned, and it felt a little bit hard to keep track of at times. Eventually it kind of, it was fine, but I just would have benefited from a map. This is like a pretty decent sized fantasy book, so it would have been good if they had included that. Or maybe I'm gonna spoil because I get maps and fantasies, but so with that out of the way, I'm going to talk very quickly about what this book is about. So this book is about Jovin, who is the proofer, which is someone that takes poisons, or not technically not really. They learn poisons when they grow up, and they're pretty much the right-hand man for the for the chancellor. And they proof the food, so they take they taste the food, make sure that if it, if it is poisoned, they can either detect it or they're being poisoned rather than the chancellor. So he is Tane's proofer. Um, and throughout the book, we are kind of just following those two together. Tane's father is poisoned alongside Jovin's uncle, and they try to discover what this poison is. It's very unknown to them. And this is something that kind of goes throughout the book, not heavily, but it is something that's kind of sprinkled in there. I kind of liked the concepts around some of the things, but obviously I can't say anything, spoilers. And following that, we have Kalina, who is Jovin's sister. We switch point of views between Jovin and Kalina, so it's a two POV book. And Kalina is the sister of Jovin. She was supposed to be a proofer uh, because she's the oldest, but because she tried taking the poison and it ended up almost killing her, she now has permanent damage to her that makes her life really difficult. She has issues with breathing. I mean, she can't really like exert herself too much. Um, I think she has infertility now because of the reason of taking the poison when she was younger. Um, it's really sad. She kind of resents her brother for it because she wanted to be a proofer and she never got to. Um, so that's kind of touched upon very slightly, but it's her point of view and her brother's point of view. I liked Jovin's a bit more. Kleena was interesting more towards the ending, but I did definitely like Jovin's point of views a lot more. I just found his more interesting. This entire book is very much centered around sieges, which I think it was well done, but there was so much, it was just too much of a, it was too much of a book. Like it was too long. I just wish it wasn't so chunky. Another thing is that Jovin and Tane are very human, I guess. They are not, 
they don't plan on just killing everyone. Like this is a fantasy book and you're used to having characters just kill people without really second thought. But a lot of the characters in this book, especially Tane and Joven, try their best not to hurt anyone. And they are very sensitive to certain things, not overly so, but it's just, they just feel like human. It, it was kind of weird. I'm not used to that in my fantasy books, but I thought it was really cool. There are really, really well-written scenes in this book. I would say that the writing is pretty good overall, just like good, but there are small scenes that really stand out to me. One in particular that was so, so, so good. It was like a little fight scene, two on one. Um, I can't say who it was between because of spoilers, but I really like that scene so much. It was so good. There is this very, very small magic system in this book, not a lot, and it doesn't really get touched upon much. I'm gonna assume maybe the later books touch upon it more only really delves into at the end not much for the first like two-thirds of the book there is a romance i did not like the romance to be honest <laughs> it was too fast i thought there was going to be, be a betrayal because of it uh, i'm not gonna say if i'm wrong or not right in that unless you watch the vlog but i didn't love the romance honestly and it just felt rushed and just i didn't really feel much for it salation people uh which are the city that we're in currently believe in being with anyone of any gender um, as well as being with multiple partners if you choose to so it's a very like open-minded city or place that they live in which is really cool um, although there isn't really any relationships between anyone other than the one relationship i think i think for the most part that's all i really have to say there's like intrigue mystery betrayal a lot of sieges and action and stuff like that there are a lot of stagnant parts in the book that just have like nothing in it but i still liked it a lot so this book has a 3.8 average rating and i would agree with that i think that, that, that sounds pretty normal for me i'm giving it a 3.5 rounding it up to a 4 so i'm pretty much in the majority of the other people that this is pretty much a very slight four stars i was gonna give it a three but the ending and just the ending itself i really liked didn't deserve a three after that, so I'm giving it a four. It was really nice to read a big fantasy book. Uh, I did not get to Eldest because of it, but it's okay. I'm reading that in September. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. I think I might continue the series. I might. I'll, I'll think about it. I don't know if I will, but I'm going to see if I want to continue the series. And if I do have it in a TBR venue in the future, that's pretty cool that a library lot of maybe find a new series I like. That's kind of cool. So I'm going to be marking this off now on my diagram or my graph or whatever you want to call it i mean, be marking this off and that shelf is now completed i will not be choosing from that shelf anymore great time i i always like doing this video it's my least watched videos but i don't think i'm gonna stop anytime soon because like it's fun i think it's a lot of fun and i love discovering authors and books i've never heard of before and i think that's kind of a great thing uh, also libraries like we really need to show our love for libraries because the libraries are amazing. It's incredible. Uh, anyway, I'm not gonna go on a tangent about that. <laughs> I marked out the shelf and now I have to put a comment down below or what shelf to do next. I will not be doing this September, so I will be doing this for October. Put numbers down for, below for the month of October. Um, either find ways to do that in the description or episode zero that I will link above. And yeah, help me choose my next shelf. I am looking forward to doing this again in October. I'm gonna miss it, but I had a lot of fun and I am happy that I got to read this book because it was actually pretty good. I really appreciate you watching this, especially if you watched through the entire thing. You're a trooper. I don't know how you would have done it, but you're a trooper. So until I continue in the month of October, I hope you have a great day. Uh, happy reading for the month of September and I hope you have a great time. It's almost fall, we're getting into fall. I am so excited about it. Thank you as always for watching everyone. Have a great day and happy reading. Goodbye.